Okay, so we spent the last few um, the, the last few days talking about rotational motion, and we've been sticking to rotational kinematics. Uh, so just describing motion, we describe things in terms of uh, angles theta, in terms of um, angular velocities omega, and angular accelerations alpha. Uh, today we're going to go a little bit into rotational dynamics, so explaining why motion happens. And we're really just going to scratch the surface of this uh, by talking about something called torque. Uh, T-O-R-Q-U-E. And you probably have some sort of idea of what a torque is. But the best way I can think of a torque is if you imagine a... Um, um, well, let me draw this here. So if you imagine a... Um, uh, a door here. So this is the hinge. I'm going to try to draw a top view of the door. It's not going to look like a door to you, but you'll get the idea. So the idea is here's here's a hinge and here's a door, and then the door can open this way, right? So here's my door. It can swing this way, right? Um, and the question is, what happens if I put the same force if I put a force, and I put that force here, but then I put that same force here, right? So you can try this while you're in your nice warm home today. Go to the nearest door. What I want you to do is I want you to try and push it sort of really close to the, uh, the hinge, and you should find that it's pretty hard to turn it, right? It doesn't turn very quickly. We could say that it doesn't have very much angular acceleration. Whereas if I push it further out here, right, it's easier to pull when you have more, uh, when you have more distance here. Right? This is the basis of something, of the idea of torque. Um, and uh, torque, if we were to give it a definition, um, torque is um, the um, applied force acting at a distance from a, a pivot point. Oop, you can't see that, can you? Sorry, torque is the applied force acting at a distance from a pivot point. So uh, torque, like all... Um, good um, uh, angular quantities has a Greek letter, and the Greek letter is tau. It looks like sort of a weird-looking T like this. And torque is defined as the radius at which this force acts times the force. But I'm going to add something to it. I'm going to say technically it's the radius times the perpendicular force. So I'm going to put this little perpendicular sign here. We've seen this before, like when we talked about... Um, Remember when we talked about work, we said uh, work was the force parallel times the distance. Well, torque is the radius times the force perpendicular. And technically, this radius has a, a name. Sometimes we call this radius, uh, the word is the lever arm. Um, so you can imagine, right, if, if, uh, if I were applying a force here at a given radius this radius is a lever arm. If I have a long, longer lever arm, I can get more torque. If I have a shorter lever arm, I get less torque. Okay. So this has all kinds of um, interesting uh, uses. Um, so let's start with a, a basic problem that I could ask you. Um, let's talk about uh, a seesaw, right? So imagine that you're on a on a seesaw. So see that we got a seesaw here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna let a, a kid sit here on the seesaw. Um, I can't draw it. This is a kid sitting on the seesaw. I'm gonna say that he's let's say uh, 20 kilograms, and my question is, what torque does this kid apply to the seesaw? And we're going to measure the torque from the, uh, oops, we're going to measure the torque from 
the uh, the fulcrum here, right, that it's resting on. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just say that this kid is, we'll say, uh, 1.5 meters away from there. So we got a lever arm of 1.5 meters. Well, in that case, I could say the torque is 1.5 meters times its force. What force is this kid putting on it? Well, he's putting on the force of gravity, right? So this kid has a weight. His weight, his force of gravity would be, remember, mg. So it'd be 20 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. So I've got that being 196 newtons. So what I've got here is this kid is applying 196 newtons of torque at a, a radius of 1.5. So I multiply that out, and I get a torque of 294. And the unit that I'm gonna use for this is the unit meters newtons. Now, it's actually important that you use the uh, unit meters newtons and not newton meter, because if you remember, we've seen uh, newton meter before, and newton meter is defined as a joule, right? Um, by convention, a newton meter or a joule is a unit of energy, and a meter newton is a unit of torque. Um, so don't use this unit, use this unit. Even though technically I could call this a joule, by convention we don't uh, call torques joules, we just call them meters newtons. Right? Uh, uh, you have an interesting um, thing that happens if, you're, if you study engineering, torque is given in foot-pounds, right? And you know what? Uh, because the unit of distance is feet and the unit of force is pounds. Um, do you know what we measure energy in? In if we're engineering, instead of calling it joules, we measure it in pounds-feet. So foot-pounds are torque, pounds-feet are our energy. That's kind of neither here nor there. But the idea here is um, you've got your torque is going to be measured in meters newtons. Now I want to do one other thing real quick and I want to say well what if this what if I had another kid here um, on this end and let's say uh, that this kid uh, I've ran out of room to put it so I'm just gonna put I'll just put a, a box on this end and I'll say that this box is 10 kilograms so then I can say, what's the net torque along this? Well, by convention, anything that's going to make your system uh, rotate counterclockwise, so anything that makes your system rotate this way is going to be called positive, and anything that makes it go uh, clockwise is minus. So counterclockwise is positive, clockwise is minus. So if I were then to say, what's the torque, um, what's the net torque on this, uh, on the seesaw now? I can say I found that the torque of the kid is 294 meters newtons. If I found the torque of, of the, um, the box here, it would be the radius or the lever arm times the perpendicular force, um, uh, which in this case is, is going to be uh, mass times gravity again because it's let's say r times mg. So the torque on the box is going to be a radius of 1.5 times the mass of 10 times 9.8. Oops. I'm getting that that comes out to be 147 meters newtons. But since this box is making the thing want to rotate clockwise, it's making it want to go whoop, this way, right? This is actually going to be a negative 147 meters newtons. So that's going to be the torque of the box. So then I could say, what's the net torque or the sum of the torques? And you should see that the sum of torques is 294 minus 147, which in this case ends up being 147 meters newtons. But the idea is any torque that makes an object want to go counterclockwise is positive. Any torque that makes an object want to go clockwise is negative. 
Uh, the only other thing that I'll, uh, I'll add to this is what happens if you're applying a force at an angle. So say that I've got, um, I'm going to go back to the example of a, of a door. Let's say that I have this door and I have a lever arm of, I'm going to say, uh, uh, 1.1 meters. But let's say that I put a force at an angle, I'm going to call this angle 30 degrees, and I'm going to say that's 10 newtons of force. Well, remember we said that torque is radius times the perpendicular force. So what i got to do first is I've got to figure out how much of this 10 newtons is going perpendicularly. So we're going to have to do, our, do some trig. And I'm going to call this side the perpendicular force and this side the parallel force. Um, and you should see here, if I do the trig, I get that the sine of 30 degrees is opposite force perpendicular divided by 10 newtons. So the force perpendicular in this case is going to be, I think it's going to be 5, isn't it? Yeah, 5 newtons. So what's the torque then? It's a radius of 1.1 meters times a perpendicular force of 5. So my torque is 5.5 meters newtons. Oop, I have this bad habit of running off the screen. All right, so that's what you've got there. Um, the check for understanding is just two problems from the syllabus for you to try. Please email me if you've got any questions and stay warm today. I will see you on Friday. The only other thing I'll remind you is don't forget to, um, uh, to um, upload your sources for your project by this weekend.